I would like to introduce to you Pastor Harry Corelsa. Pastor Harry, come on up while I introduce you. They can see, see you in all your glory. But I... The reason we just love having Pastor Harry here is he carries a faith that is so contagious. Pastor Harry, would you just release it all over us? We, we want a taste of that faith. I've asked him to speak on the Word of God, which is going to be amazing. But Past, Pastor Harry has started his own movement of churches. You have three churches, Pastor Harry. And um, just an amazing preaching gift and just an incredible husband, father, and grandfather. Amen. God bless you, sir, as you preach. Father, we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for your grace that is sufficient for us. We thank you as we sense your presence. We thank you, God, that there's not one thing that we can do as person to change the heart of men and women, but we thank you that the Bible says the heart of the king is in the hands of God, and like a water stream, you turn it to uh, this morning. I pray, Father, that you touch both young and old, both good and bad, both black and white, that you touch people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you that, Father, even the person that is furthest removed from you will draw the closest to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you that you will, because of your power and your word, Father, that right now sickness and disease, Father, with us within its root in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you that right now even a stroke that was about to come, Father, is averted. Father, heart attack is averted. Father, death is averted in the name of Jesus Christ. And through your word, Father, opportunities, doors are opening this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. The lost will be found. The blind will see. The deaf will hear the dead will rise in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ we give you praise father we thank you God that right now that discouragement disillusionment father moves away from people this morning in the name of Jesus Christ we give you the praise and the honor and the worship and the adoration in the name of Jesus Christ come on give the Lord the biggest praise that you can love the Lord your God come on bless his name this morning, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want us to stand to our feet and we honor the gifts of the house. Yeah, let's honor, let's honor what God has blessed us with. We want to thank you, Pastor Carol, Pastor Andrew, thank you so much for the gifts that you are to this congregation. Not just to the congregation, but to the church as a whole. Not just to the church as a whole, but to the country. Because you are the beacon of hope. You have it within you to bring together a people from different culture, nation, tongue, and tribe. And to gather together under one roof and serve a God that they can't see, that they've never met. But I declare in the name of Jesus Christ over you that your increase, that your, your influence will increase in the name of Jesus Christ. That, ne that right now nations will come to your dwelling. Your sons will come from afar. Your daughters will be carried on the arm. Kings will come to this house in the name of Jesus Christ. Of the most influential, of the most illiterate, of the wealthiest will come to this house in the name of Jesus Christ. Leaders will emerge from this house like never before in the name of Jesus Christ. But I declare this over you that right now that the Lord pours out His Spirit upon you and that right now that you will see things that you've never seen in your life and you will hear things that you've never heard. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, 23, blessed are the eyes that see what you see and the ears that hear what you hear. For so many kings and prophets have a desire to hear what you hear and see what you see but they can't. And right now God God is saying, I will make you see things that you've never seen in your younger life. I will make you hear things that you've never heard with your ear, but it will spring forth like a well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will renew your strength and you will run and never grow weary and you will mount up with wings as an eagle in the name of Jesus Christ that your sons and your daughters will come from afar in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you will see this with your own eyes and your heart will swell with joy and it will throb in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come and give the Lord big praise. 
Hallelujah. And God will confirm his word. God will confirm his word. He's not a man that he should lie. God will confirm his word. God watches over his word to perform it. The word of God is active. It's alive. It cuts through bone, joint, and marrow. That is the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 What a beautiful presence of God in the place. What a beautiful presence. The presence of God is here to heal people. The presence of God is here to touch people. The presence of God is here to break the yoke of discouragement. The presence of God is here to break that yoke. To break it. Break depression. Break cancer. Break barrenness over your business in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The presence of God. And this week it's changing. This week it's changing. This week, suddenly, immediately. In Jesus' mighty name. Can I have more sound on the mic, please? Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It is a great honor to be in the presence of Jesus. I, as a, I couldn't sleep. I, I never slept last night. I, could, I, was, I was as nervous as whatever. But... The, then I came here and I, and I walked in here and, I, and, well, you just need to show up, then God shows up. <laughs> Hallelujah. <sighs> now we can now go home. <laughs> <laughs> I want to really just thank God. It's, uh, you know, last, week, uh, last year when I was here, it was one week prior to the cultural. Oh, bro. I, I missed it. Come on. You make me miss it again? What's this now? <laughs> Let's get into the Word of God. Do you have your Bible? Huh? Do you have your Bible? Do you have your iPad? Do you have your phone? Do you have your... Uh, 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 uh. The Bible says all things hold together because of the Word of God. The Bible says that. The Bible. Say the Bible says. Turn to your neighbor says the Bible says. Yes. Not... not not, uh, I heard that, you, you know, one of the key things that I want to say, I've studied, I, I spoke to a guy one day, I said to him, I said to him, who's your star? He said to me, he said, Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo. I said, how, do, uh, 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 how many children does he have? He says, no, uh, two. I said, does he have a wife? No. I said, okay, uh, is he married? He said, no. I said, uh, how did he get the children? Ah. <laughs> said, no, he is a surrogate thing. I said, okay. I said, uh, how much does he earn? Then he told me. I said, who does he play for? Then he told me. Then I said, uh, uh, I said uh, how old is he? Then he told me. And he told me everything about Ronaldo. Then I said with another lady, I said, uh, who's your star? She said, Oprah Winfrey. I said, tell me something about Oprah. She spoke nonstop. <laughs> I spoke to another guy. He said, I said, who's your star? He said, he mentioned a name. I said, tell me about the guy. Then he spoke nonstop. Then I said, I went back to the three of them. I said, tell me who Jesus is. I tell me who God is. I tell me who the Holy Spirit is. Hmm. I said, how did you acquire learning about who, who Oprah is, who Ronaldo is, and who, who Donald Trump is? How did you acquire learning about who Jacob Zuma is, who President Ramapo, who? How did you acquire learning? He said, I read, I watched, I listened to, and I attended. I Googled, I whatever. I Googled, I Googled. I YouTube, I Instagram, I, I Facebooked. I, I said, how did you acquire this? I said, I did all this. I said, how long did it take you to acquire this learning? I said, I acquired this learning over a period of about two years. And the person couldn't stop. But I said, now tell me who Jesus is. And the person said, Jesus is um, my Savior. Jesus is God. Jesus is my Redeemer. Jesus is... Uh, I said, how, uh, when you spoke about Ronaldo, you spoke eloquently. When you spoke about Oprah Winfrey, you spoke eloquently. When you spoke about uh, Donald Trump, you spoke eloquently. But now I'm asking you about Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the Counselor, Deliverer, Emmanuel, the Fortress. Uh, 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 now you can't even speak for five minutes, but you spoke almost an hour about Ronaldo. Yeah. <laughs> Challenge, eh? If I have to ask you now, if you have to tell me now who Jesus is, there's a, uh, you turn to your neighbor and say, you have to read. 
Yes. You have to watch. Mm. Yes. If you don't read, one of, one of the key things that you need to understand that if you read for 45 minutes a day, you finish a book in a week. Yeah. If you read for 45 minutes a day, you can finish a book in a week. Right? So that means if you read for 45 minutes after Jesus Christ, you get to know who Jesus is, then your faith in Jesus just goes to... Yeah. But we read after Donald Trump. We, uh, sorry for the names. We read after... Yeah. after. Yeah. We read after xenophobia. Yeah. We read after looting. We read after... And we have all the knowledge of who... What looting and what xenophobia and Afrophobia and whoever phobia... I do not know who that lady is, but phobia. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge only comes through the word. Yeah. Knowledge comes through reading. Yeah. Knowledge, you know, people, I, last night I was thinking, I said, people read on the 50 shades of gray. <laughs> okay, it's not your language, don't worry. No, no, no. It's only for people older than 18. Uh, so we read all these books and we, and we follow up on the series and we can tell everything about the 50 shades of gray. But when, he, when it comes to the book, the Bible says in Romans 10, it says it's near you. Why do you think do they put Bibles near you in the hospital? Because it's near you to get into your heart and come through your mouth. It's near you, near you, near you. If you are in business here today, you study business as if this is your life. And then you study the economy as, as if this is your life. Then you study a newspaper and everything that... I do not know who the guy is that ever wrote the report in the newspaper. And that's the first thing that we do. We read newspapers early hours of the morning. And then we acquire all this pessimistic knowledge. Yeah. And then it affects us emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. And then it affects us in the way that we come to office. It affects us the way we talk, the way we see things. It affects us. But when you wake up in the morning, the Bible says in Psalm chapter 1, it says, blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Not sit in the presence of the mockers and the scoffers. But his delight is in the word of the Lord. He meditates upon it early hours on the morning. And the, the Bible says in Psalm 119, from verse 97 to 104, he says, when I read your word, it makes me wiser than my enemy. It gives me more understanding than my teachers. That's why some of the people that taught you at school are now your congregants. No disrespect. No disrespect. But when you meditate on the word of God, that it increases your memory. It increases your understanding. The Bible says in Isaiah 11 too, it says, because I have the spirit of God, it... it I have the spirit of understanding. I have the spirit of knowledge. I have the spirit of wisdom. I have the spirit of counsel. I have the spirit of power. I have the spirit of, 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 of prayer. When you meditate on the word of God, it increases your memory. For those of you that grew up and somebody told you you're stupid. When you read the word of God, that the word of God itself has the capacity. Because the Bible says it is active and it's alive. It cuts through your bone and by the way, your brain is moral. It increases your memory. It increases your memory. Doesn't matter what age you are, ma'am. You can see things that you never saw when you were younger. You can hear things that you never heard when you were younger. You will do exploits according to Daniel 11.32 and you, because the people who know their God through reading are strong. Can I get into the word? <sighs> the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 to 17, he says, it says that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation. Through faith which is in Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ before his 
his, re- his uh, crucifixion. Christ Jesus after his resurrection. All scripture is given for inspiration. And uh, inspiration of God and is profitable. Say profitable. profitable. So for the businessman, before you get profit, the word makes you profitable. Hello? Before, for the sick person, before you get your healing, you are already profitable in healing. For the person that is going through a challenge personally, the Bible says that the word of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped. Amen? So the Bible says all scripture... The verse says, all scripture is profitable. So whether you know Psalm 23, Psalm 23 is profitable. The, the Lord is my shepherd, it's profitable. I shall not want, it's profitable. He makes me lie down, it's profitable. Say profitable. Uh-huh. Not just money, but uh, not just in monetary value, but spiritual value, etc., uh, etc. Et the Bible says, it makes you wise for salvation. Yeah. Salvation is not just when you get saved here. Salvation is even when you're struggling with something within your life, whether it's anger, hatred, unforgiveness, malice, etc. Whether you are struggling, the Bible says that the word of God brings salvation. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, those that call upon the name of the Lord in the area where they're struggling shall be saved. In that area, say area. area. Yeah, nobody knows about that area. Just area. Say area. Yes, nobody knows. Uh, don't look as if anybody knows. Just know <laughs> the area. The area. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone has got a. It makes you wise for salvation. It provides teaching. It provides reproof. It provides correction. It provides instruction in righteousness. It brings maturity. Say maturity. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, it says, And the son grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and favor with men. So that means if you read the word, you grow first in knowledge and in understanding. And when you have a challenge, then you apply your knowledge and your understanding. That is wisdom. And because you have wisdom, that means it gives you stature. So it gives you status because you get your face in the book. You get your face in the book. You get your face in the book. Your face in the book. <laughs> And when you have their face in the book, <laughs> you grow in stature. It gives you status. <laughs> and then the people at work will like you. <laughs> the Bible is God's word, my dear friend. I want to say this to you that the Bible says, the Bible says, In Psalm 114 verse 3, if you study the word of God, the Bible says, this is Moses, he only had the word of God. He had God, encounter with God, and he had the word of God. The Bible says, when Moses came to the sea, it fled. Mm. (laughs) The Bible says, when the sea saw them, it fled. The Bible says, when the sea saw Moses, (laughs) <laughs> can, can you think, here comes over, here you come, you have the word of God, nobody knows that you were meditating on God's word, nobody knows what's happening at work, nobody knows what's happening in your marriage, nobody knows what's happening in your finances, but when that sea sees you, when the sea saw them, it fled. Can you see? The Bible says in Joshua chapter 3, when the sea saw Joshua, it fled. 
<sighs> so please, can I ask you, don't just be a person that comes here. That, that Bible that you have is not supposed to gather dust. That Bible that you have is not supposed to make, make you look religious. That Bible that you have is not supposed to look you Christianese. The Bible that you have is the mind of God documented on paper. The mind of God documented on paper. So that means the Bible consists out of two testaments. Now what is a testament? A testament is the mind of the deceased documented on paper for the beneficiary. Ah. So some of you sit with wills and testaments say, when are you going to die? Where are you dying? <laughs> so some of you sit with wills and say, that brown document, that brown envelope, that, that, that safe, Nobody messes with that safe. Because <laughs> oh. the Bible is the mind of God documented on paper. So that means it is the will, a testament that was documented with you as the beneficiary. Yeah. Say beneficiary. Say, t t turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a beneficiary. <laughs> yeah. Don't wait. Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9, 10, and say, say uh, so <laughs> I want to say this. Jesus did not die to leave a testament behind. But Jesus was also resurrected to see to it that the testament is being executed. Because when somebody dies, listen. When somebody dies, the beneficiaries, whether you know it or not, if you don't know, you'll stay. If you don't know, if you don't know that there's a testament, uh, there's a will left behind for you, you'll stay in ignorance, you'll stay poor, you'll stay miserable, you say, uh, oh. But listen, the moment when you know that there's a will, the first thing that you do when somebody has passed on, then you take the will to a lawyer or an advocate. But Jesus did not just die. But the Bible says in 1 John 2, he is our advocate. So he came back to be the advocate so that he can present Come on. Come on. the will Come on. to the Father on behalf of you, the beneficiary. Make sense? So do not, I challenge you from the youngest to those, the person that sits the closest at the front, the person that, that sits at the back. Do not, do not neglect the word of God. Do not, do not neglect the word of God. I'll show you now from the word of God so that you understand. Are you, are you still with me? Yeah. So please, I do not know whose lawyer is here, but in any case. Lawyer, advocate, SC, what? Mm. You cannot be a lawyer and you're not the beneficiary of the word. And you only know section what, what of the Criminal Procedure Act. But you do not know Psalm 23. Yeah? Yeah. How can you, you understand? So, because... One of the things that you need to understand about the Constitution, whether it's the Criminal Procedure Act or the Road Traffic Act or it's the labor law, that thing makes provision for you to protect you. So the Word of God has been written not to condemn you. The Word of God has never been sent. The Bible says in Psalm 107 verse 20, God sent His Word to heal. God sent His Word to heal. And I want to ask you, each and every one of you, from the youngest to the oldest, I'd like to ask you, become like a newborn baby again. Pastor Carol and Pastor Andrew has been feeding you the word of God, etc. But 1 Peter, 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 Peter says that in 1 Peter 2 verse 2, he says, like a newborn baby, desire the sincere milk of the word of God by which you're going to grow. Amen. 
desire the sincere milk of the word of God by which you're going to grow. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 says, And men shall not live by bread alone. You shall not live by the external circumstances alone. As pastors, we will not live by our challenges alone. But we will live. As a mother, you will not live by divorce alone. But you will live with every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If you are a divorcee in this place, the word of God will take you from emotion to devotion. The word of God. You might be a widow in this place. The word of God will take you from emotion to devotion. You might be a person that has been disappointed by your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, or your whoever. The word of God will take you from emotion to devotion. The word of God will take you from barrenness to fruitfulness. The word of God will take you from sickness to health. The word of God will take you from blindness to sight. The word of God will take you from being rejected to feel accepted. The word of God. Say the word of God. Mm. Mm. Makes sense. I went through a very difficult thing in my life many years, about 20, 20, 22 years ago. And then everyone just rejected me. Everyone just gave up on me. Everyone just cursed me. Everyone just, um, then I was diagnosed with an incurable disease. And then I thought I'm going to die. I saw people die. But I'm still here. Yeah. And while I was alone, I only had my Bible. And when I read the book, it was as if I was alone with the Father. Yeah. It was as if God spoke to me alone. Can I have the pianist just play the pianist? The pianist, just play piano and strings, please. I, I can, can, I had the word of God, and the word of God transformed me. Paul, a, a serial killer, I, a serial killer. Serial. So for those of you who do not know that Paul was the most xenophobic person ever. Uh, uh, you, 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 think, you think this South Africans can do it? No, Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. The most xenophobic person got letters from the authorities to come for these foreigners that call themselves Christian, call themselves of the way. And he got letters so that he could persecute them. And then eventually this very same Paul, he wrote in Romans 12 too, he says, do not be conformed anymore. Hmm. <laughs> he says, do not be conformed to this system, but be transformed. By the renewal of your mind. It says, my mind is renewed because I was, I was a hater. Oh. I was a hater of black people, white people. I was a hater of Nigerians, Zimbabweans. I was a hater. I was a hater. I was a hater. He says, but now my mind is renewed through the word of God. So, and I got to know what is the good and perfect and acceptable word. Say it out. 